consistently portrayed science as advanced enough to revive fossils and create man-made Pokemons over the different generation. Science play an important role in helping explain phenomenons in the game that is very similar to the real world we are in. So let's start with the premise of this video. This discussion will be centered around the first generation games that take place in Kanto, with some references to the remakes that were made on these games, but they will only be used for comparison purposes. So let's begin by discussing fossils in the games. The games have repeatedly emphasized that fossil Pokemon are part rock due to being revived from incomplete DNA. What this means is that the fossil Pokemon we see in game do not necessarily look like that in their past life. So what this means or has been heavily implied in the games is that mega evolutions allow these Pokemon to achieve their previous state. This idea of science being able to revive extinct species and creatures is a very common theme present within science fiction and it's not surprising that Pokemon chose to portray science in this way in the games. The whole idea with the old ember being revived into a dinosaur-like creature where have you seen that before? That's right, Jurassic Park, which ties in nicely to our next point, science and corporates. In Generation 1, we're introduced to the state-of-the-art leading technological company known as the Silk Co. It is a very wealthy company in Kanto that leads manufacturing and technology advancement, most notably in the Pokeball and the Master Ball. They are also responsible for the evolution of the Porygon line, creating the upgrade to evolve Porygon into Porygon 2, although the dubious this is slightly more questionable. At this point, the Silk Code sounds great. They created Pokeballs, they created man-made Pokemon, they are the leading manufacturer in technology. But there's something not quite clear about their portrayal. So now let's talk about the portrayal of scientists. They are mostly associated with the Silk Code, and this is their portrayal in Gen 1 and Gen 7. They are using tropes. So let's quickly discuss what tropes are. Tropes are a figurative expression that is common or repetitive, making them familiar, allowing the audience to quickly understand the role that the character is playing. Most importantly, it is based upon a common understanding of that time. At least within the Generation 1 games, the scientists' tropes mostly stuck with the glasses, the lab coat, and them being male. These are common stereotypes that are associated with scientists. They are not necessarily the best representation of science, but it's interesting to note that these together create the impression of a mad scientist. The idea of a mad scientist is very prevalent among popular culture, and it's interesting that this trope seems to go into the Pokemon games as well, as when the Silk Co falls to Team Rocket in the climax of the game's plot. Many of the scientists present within the building chose to align themselves with Team Rocket, to fully encapsulate the scientist's image, they even use man-made Pokemon when they are battling against you. With all this in mind, I would suggest that the game portrays a cautionary tale about science, as while well science has provided many different advancements within the games, villainous organizations can take advantage of this scientific curiosity in order to further their villainous ambitions.